In this video, we'll be taking a look at user inputs on the PM50 graphical panel meter. The PM50 allows users to connect input devices, such as on-off toggle switches or momentary push buttons, directly to the appropriate terminals on the unit and assign functions to those inputs. The available functions for user inputs will vary between the analog and digital models of the PM50, but the process for setting them up is the same. I'll be working with an analog PM50 in this video. For a complete list of user input functions with descriptions of how they work, reference the user manual for your model of PM50. Before we get started with configuration, we'll take a quick look at how the user inputs are wired, with user input 1 as an example. As you can see, it's possible to wire the user inputs using either syncing logic or sourcing logic, the key difference being that syncing logic does not require any external voltage to be applied and sourcing logic does. You'll see here that the same terminals will be used either way. In this example, we will have a momentary push button wired to the PM50 using syncing logic between the user input 1 terminal and the user common terminal. With the push button now wired to user input 1, we're ready to assign a function to it and demonstrate it in real time. For demonstration purposes, my PM50 already has a latching alarm configured which will be activated when a flow of more than 50 gallons per minute is detected. We'll be configuring our user input as the reset for this alarm. We're currently under the 50 GPM set point, so I'll now increase the flow to trigger the alarm. As you can see from the red enunciator border, the alarm has triggered and since it is a latching alarm, it will stay on until we clear it, even when the flow returns to normal. I'll bring the flow back down below 50 GPM, and you'll see that the latching alarm will still be triggered because we need a way to reset it. And we'll now configure the user input to reset this alarm. I've already logged into my PM50 using admin credentials, so I'll click once on device to get started. From here, click once on Function Configuration. Next, we'll click once on the User Input Configuration menu item to expand it. The first thing we'll do here is click once on the Sync slash Source menu to select how our user input is wired. In this example, we've wired the user input using syncing logic, so we just need to make sure Sync is selected, and we can see that it is. Be sure to click Save if you've made any changes here. Next, I'll click once on the user input menu item to expand it. Under the hardware input section, you can select either of the two user inputs to configure. In this example, we will only be configuring user input 1 since that's where the momentary push button is wired. Under the function section, you'll see a drop down menu where we can select the function that we'd like to assign to this user input. For this example, we'll be using the reset function, so I'll go ahead and select that. With the reset function selected, you'll see that we now have a reset selections menu to choose what we want to actually reset when we activate our user input. It's possible to make multiple selections here if we'd like to reset multiple values, but for this example, we only want to reset our set point one alarm, so I'll make sure that's the only thing selected. At this point, we're ready to click Save and then navigate to the home page to test our newly configured user input. As you can see, our alarm banner is still visible because our latching alarm still needs to be reset. For this test, I'll press the push button wired to user input 1, which we have just configured as a reset for this set point alarm. At that point, the alarm should reset and the banner should disappear. As you can see, the alarm cleared and the red enunciator border disappeared when I activated the user input, so everything is working as expected. And that's it for user input configuration. Thank you for watching.